Now, and I do think teams like to try to win Super Bowls like they had them before. You know, we, when we watch out here the Rams, they had a greatest show on turf, and then they came back with this iteration of a great offense and went to the Super Bowl. We're still looking for triplets in Dallas. And the way Seattle won their Super Bowl was, boy, that Legion of Boom defense. You know what I mean? So we're still trying to go back. Let's build that great defense and, and, and see if we can capture those glory days again. And, and Coach McDonald did a pretty good job, great job, actually, to that last game. And in, in, with, Ra- with the Ravens, I mean, all year creating what he calls simulated pressure, where he's rushing four people but make you believe that he's rushing more than four and you're getting rid of the ball. He did a great job. He did a great job. And I suspect he'll do a pretty good job in Seattle on defense. Now, I'm still going to wonder because in this game, it's what are you doing at the quarterback position? You know, you got Geno there and Geno just signed his deal. So he has another two years on his deal. But what's going on after Geno? And I thought they were going to. Whenever I see a team that's looking for a quarterback, I'm always thinking that has to be their first priority. I know Geno's there, but you're going to be looking for a quarterback by the end of this contract for Geno if you don't get any farther than you've been getting. So, so this is going to be an interesting hire because I want to see what he does with that offensive side of the football. Mm. But I like what he did in, in, in Baltimore until that last game when he let the only thing in the world that could beat him, <laughs> Travis Kelsey, go 11 mm. for 11 in that game, and we never made any adjustments, or he never made any adjustments to do something about that. But it's a great hire for Seattle if he can do well, they, they the play well in the second. They played kind of well in the second half. No, they, they did. They shut him well. down in yeah. the second half. Mm-hmm. They shut him down. But he needed to shut down 11. I mean, shut down uh, uh, Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Should I be skeptical here? 36 years old. You're different at 36 years old as a defensive coordinator yeah. than you are a 50-year-old head coach who's got some scars and some battles and some of those sort of things. I've seen it on both sides. I've seen a young head coach and and Sean McVay understand that I need to hire an old gray wizard in Mm -hmm. Wade Phillips, and I just need to concentrate on the offensive side of the ball and manage the team. And one of the first things I told Sean, and Sean, I tell you, I told him, I said, here, man, I've been knowing Sean since Sean was with us at the Tampa days when Mm -hmm. he was just trying to understand how to be around a football team. Mm -hmm. I told Sean, I said, whatever you do, be yourself. Don't try to duplicate John Gruden. I want you to be you because the players are going to see through you. They're going to see right through you with the phoniness. And I tell all young head coaches the same thing. And the reason I'm a little skeptical of this is because Brandon Staley was the first time defensive coordinator and had a pretty good defense in Los Angeles with the Rams who got him hired with the Chargers. Things just went different because when you a coordinator – Versus a head coach. There you go. You're managing everything, yep. even if you are calling the defense still. Mm-hmm. You right. still got to figure out what you want to call on offense because they got to check with you. Mm-hmm. Unless you just go get a call blanche to him and say, hey, man, you just yeah. you do whatever you want to do. You still got to call timeouts. You still got a challenge flag. It's a lot you got to deal with. Personal players with personal issues. You got to have this is in college football and the media, but, yeah, but you gotta still got to have a conversation with them. Yeah, you still have to have a conversation with players, the media, all of those sort of things. So I'm still a little reserved in, on the on the surface. It looks like a tremendous hire based on what the Ravens were able to do on defense. Yeah. But the Ravens have been able to do that on defense no matter it's a, it's who's a calling it. You, it's go just all a, you go all the way back to Marvin Lewis. Do you? And to Rex. And then yeah. Rex. Yeah. And you just keep, just keep going. Right. You just keep going. Yeah. Every coordinator. Wink Martindale. Wink Martindale. Kind of you just keep going. Yep. They're yep. all able to do right. it. It's, so this is a different challenge now. And that's the thing that has me with a little bit of pause. Yeah. Because now you got to understand there are no... Roquan Smith's over there for you anymore. Nope. I mean, Bobby Wagner's still great, but Bobby Wagner getting up there at age. Mm-hmm. So it's just a little bit different. I think it's I think it's a good hire. I'm just a little bit at pause with it. Okay. Because I don't know what type of head coach he could potentially be. All right. I have no idea what to make of it because it's a complete X factor hire to me. 
look back at Mike McDonald's history, yeah. his resume. He went to Georgia, but not to play football. He didn't play football. Grad, grad assistant. He was just, a, but but he just went to school yeah. and he helped coach a high school team while he was a student at Georgia, yeah. majoring in finance. And then he got his master's at Georgia as a graduate assistant in sports management. So he's a smart young man. Give him that. And then he hooked on with John Harbaugh as just. A glorified gopher. He's quality control. You know, he's in doing 20, the twenty in twenty fourteen. He was a yeah. get back coach. Yeah. Right. He's a get back coach. He's a get, he's a get back. back coach. Okay, he's one of those. And that was in right. twenty fourteen. Right. That wasn't long ago. Okay, and slowly but surely, he moved up the ladder, DBs and linebackers, and then all of a sudden, he he inherits this legacy. And I'm not saying he's not really good at what he did last year. They were really good. They were the best defense in pro football the whole year. So yeah. I, I give him high yeah. marks for that. But I've said this for years and years. In the sport that you play, the National Football League, the coaching feeder system is incredibly flawed because there's no minor league. At least you, in, in the NBA, you got the G League, used to be the yeah. CBA, the Continental Basketball Association, where Phil Jackson can go win a championship in the CBA, and then you say, he looks like he's ready to be the Bulls coach, yeah. right? Because you saw he could actually run a whole organization right. as the right. head coach. Even he, without Michael Jordan. Yeah, even without Michael Jordan. But in this case... Mike McDonald has no idea what he's about to get into because he's never remotely done what is about to be asked of him because, as you know all too well, just to coordinate one side of the ball and to meet with one side of the ball and have no other responsibilities has virtually nothing to do with being a head coach in the National Football League. At all. It just doesn't have anything. But so you have no head coaching experience. At least Jimmy Johnson had proven, as you right. know all too well, at the college level, he won a national championship. He had been the head coach at Oklahoma State. He had been a head You could see, oh, he's doing He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Again, Matt Rule would, would be the opposite of that because you think, well, he won at Baylor, but, but he was not head coaching material at the, next, at the highest level. So now he's back at Nebraska where he belongs. Okay, <laughs> right? And so it, it can work both ways. But listen, the NFL highway is littered with the bones of coordinators who were not qualified to be head coaches, but because of the success of the football team, like like Jimmy's, all the assistants, they all got jobs because that's what happens. Uh, Arthur have, Smith, yeah. check yeah. Arthur Smith okay. from Arthur Atlanta. Smith. Okay. Yeah, but these right. guys, these, these guys totally understand what you guys are talking about. You know, as a coordinator, I like to say your focus is on the 180. Yeah. You're just worried about your side. Your side. As a head coach, your focus has to be on the whole, the whole 360. Thing. And sometimes Everything. It, it dilutes your Everything. ability right. to coach right. the side of the ball that you're best at. Right. It can. Right. It can. Right. And, and, and that's the important part right here. Now, how do you, what he was talking about, how do you manage having uh, a balanced team where defense, you're doing something that yeah. works with the offense. Yeah. The offense, you're doing what works with the defense, complementary football. And how do you get all of that on the same page? I got to imagine that these guys have trained themselves as they got ready. You know, Mike McDonald has he's come through the ranks and coaches have helped him by putting that each level so he can coach. That's yeah. one thing I think is a good thing. So because when you coach all these different levels, you understand all the different positions. And, and, and I know he has to be ready. It's just those little well, things, might, Keith. It's the little things like time management. Time management. Should I call yeah. the timeout? Yeah. Do I throw that red yeah. flag? Don't, you got to have somebody in his ear upstairs to help him with that, that mm -hmm. has done that. You got to have, least, right, you gotta have right. the right staff, but part right. of, part of, it, it have part somebody of help him. having the right staff, and, and I only know this because I've been, I played and I've been around coaches for umpteen years at different stops and I deal with coaches literally every single day just for a number of different reasons. When you talk about young head coaches and you look at the resumes of young head coaches and I'll point to Mike McDaniel in Miami. He got a real resume because he started in Denver with the Shanahan's. And all he did was bounce around right. to different organizations with yep. the Shanahan's. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so now... He was ready because he'd have been around it enough. He's only been with the Ravens, okay? And so when you talk about having control of a position, the first time he had control of a position was 2017 as a defensive back coach. Mm. Other than that, he was getting me some coffee he here and there. Get that off the fax That's machine. Well, why don't you find out if, if Doris is yeah. booking our travel? 
That's what he was doing until 2017, essentially. So right. it's a but, short window right, right there where he had a unit that he was in control of. Okay. Has now, he ever given a speech to a team before a, a, a game or during halftime? I'm sure well, I'm as sure a defensive he, coordinator he, he probably has. I don't think he's spoken to the whole football team. I'll bet he's never had. He probably, he probably has maybe. Yeah, I'm sure he probably has. Usually, usually a coach like that, a defensive coordinator, will, talk to the whole team at halftime because the unit is doing one thing and they should be doing another and he gets everybody up and the head coach will allow him to do right, such. Right. My biggest thing for him is hiring the right staff because when you haven't, you don't have a Rolodex of coaches that you've been with, yeah. it's hard to find somebody who's not trying to undermine you to get a job True. as a head coach. Yep. I, I'm just telling you what I know and what I've heard. That's all I'm trying to tell you. Okay. But I think he'll, I think he'll be okay. The one thing you Just can so do young, when, though, when you interview a 36-year-old, you can look in his eyes and do you see and feel a natural-born leader of men? Because and that's the essence right. of that that job is right. to lead right. other humans into battle. Right, right. And you, you guys knew Jimmy Johnson was just natural-born. Bill Parcells, natural-born leader. You could just... Right. You, you just walk into the, the room. Psychology. You know, Understood the psychology of people and of players and yeah. everything. Maybe they, he can give they, them they a few that. Phil Jackson yeah. books or something. Right. But yeah. let me let me say this. Too. When guys start and I heard somebody talking about it. I don't know. One of Bill Belichick's pupils talking about how Bill, he started as this quality control guy. Yeah. And Bill used to make him draw up every defense. Yes. And then every offense. And, and that, that, that they were preparing to play. And he learned so much about football <laughs> yeah. in this time. So we, we, we laugh and mess with him. No, I'm brother. laughing. I know. Well, <laughs> I was saying, we, we, all, we call him the get back coach. Coach, because all he does really when they acquire the coach is get back, get back on the sideline, get back. That's all. But these guys do so much studying in the game because they have that piece where they got to draw all these plays that they really do learn a lot of the game. And if they have that ability to lead, yep. they learn fast because they're smart people. And you see them draw, r raising, no, up I, the I, I, I raising, laugh, raising up that class. I laugh because you bring me back. You mentioned Belichick. So obviously he was right. my defensive coordinator. And I was on our minute defense when I played with the Jets. And literally, I would watch... So a minute defense. Come on, man. Right. Ain't nothing but throwing a pass here and there. And, man, I watch so much tape and I have to study so many different formations. Right. I'm like, man, they gonna go to trips. And one dude over here, why you got me looking at that stuff today? Right, 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 but that's right, right. you're talking about a hail mary kind yes. of defense. Right. right. Yeah, yeah he minute broke defense. It down all but he was literally. See, that's what I'm talking. Literally. About. Yeah. Breaking that's me down about, and having me sit and watch no, no, no. an hour and a half to two hours of film on stuff that was. Five years ago from this offensive coordinator, yeah. that was with another team, but okay. this is what he might do. That's a I used to be like, come on, man. <laughs> You're yep. killing me right now. I'm trying to, I'm yeah. trying to get ready for the club, man. Oh, man I'm looking at you, Tap Mill. I don't want Tap Mill. Why, 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 you, why you running that mouth then when I talk about that's what we need in Dallas? You know, we don't need no You see, we see not that's what I'm talking about. about. I, but I'm right just saying, now. it comes out of your spews, out of your mouth. It ain't what you're talking about. You don't think McCarthy does that? No. Not when I saw a third and three and the cornerback was 15 yards off the tight end. No. no. See, that's what I was talking about. No. I'm just saying. That's all. But we, we, I digress. By the way, <laughs> we're dealing in my pain. I do got a pick in the league. One last, positive, <laughs> one last positive on Mike McDonald. I read several quotes from veteran Raven leaders yeah. who stood for him. Okay. They, they right. did. And so that so that's a spoke highly of He's a leader of men. Yeah. yeah. Right. He he Aaron Donald spoke highly and of... defense, you need that more than anything. Pat is daily, too. Right. How did, defense that, about how did that work out? <laughs> about He's only there for that. one year. You know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, that's what, the, that's what happens more often than not. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.